Good morning, Pastor Bill Lemons here from Covenant Faith Center. Good to have you with us this morning. I know some of you are already online. Uh, I need to switch over and add this uh, to our church Facebook page. So if you'll give me a moment, I will uh, do that. So I can't do it until it's live. That's why I have to uh, go this route. So I'm going to go to my page. I'm going to talk my way through this. I'm live. I can hit share, options, copy, <laughs> go to the church page, and I go to create a post. <clears throat> I hit that paste, continue, publish. All right, we should be live now on both the church Facebook page and my Facebook page. Okay, so I see, nope, where is, I can't see it there. All right, now I gotta go back to my page because that's what I use the monitor with. <clears throat> Here we go. And we are, okay, we are live. Now, I don't know what's, what's going on with um, Facebook. All of a sudden I'm getting uh, the words I speak are showing up as lettering across the bottom of my page. I know you guys aren't seeing that, but I can see it on my monitor. I don't know when that started or how it started, but I'm dealing with it. <laughs> We're a couple minutes late because um, as I went to sign on this morning, <clears throat> all of a sudden Facebook decided that I had to um, do a sign in instead of normally we just go right to it. Uh, all of a sudden I had to do a sign in and I had to get my information to sign in. So that delayed it. So I apologize for that, but we're here now. Praise the Lord. We're going to have some worship. And I want to ask you that watch every week to send me your comments. Um, do you like the worship or would you rather just get straight into the word? Uh, I, I had, a, we did have for a while some people saying, oh, we really like the worship. But I want to make sure that uh, you guys are still being blessed and ministered to by it. And, uh, you know, if not, then should we just go straight to the word uh, and the message? So let me know on the comments. So praise the Lord. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our worship. Join with us and, and be a part, be a participator. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Yeah.
been waiting for this song to be declared by the church to see Jesus get his full reward in every place in your body, your family, wherever it is. There's miracles being released in the room, in the great room, online, in your room. It doesn't matter where you're at. There's miracles being released in the declaration of God's goodness. If you need a miracle in your body right now, I just want you to lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. He's already been healing people as we speak, as we worship. He's been healing people. You don't have to have people laying hands on you, but pastors, get out there and pray for people. Begin to declare perfect health and healing. I feel the righteousness of God in the room. The righteousness that Jesus purchased on the cross, the blood of Jesus is making your body right. I feel like this is born again again Sunday. Let's get born again. Let's actually believe what God has declared over us. Let's be the believing church. We're going to sing this and just keep declaring this. And I want you to receive it. Prodigals are coming home. Cancer is being healed. Bone cancer. Carcinomas. Metastasized cancer. You die now in the name of Jesus. Deliverance in Jesus' name. tell you that's powerful worship I like to have the time of worship at the beginning of the service uh, in order to get our hearts and our minds and you don't have to mess with the camera uh, in order to get our hearts and our minds moving in the right direction um, that song really ministered to me this morning uh, I'm one of those miracles I'm, I'm I've been one of those ones resurrected praise God the devil tried to take me uh, take my life and uh, through a number of things that took place 
God resurrected me and uh, I praise the Lord for it. Uh, we had a good medical team uh, that God gave us at the hospital. We had good paramedics that uh, did their job. And then we had my son and his wife actually who got on the phone to call 911. And he jumped, got me on the floor and started pumping my heart and kept me alive while the paramedics got here and they took charge then. <clears throat> but during that brief time, I was out. I was in heaven. And uh, I'll tell you, I, I shared already last week uh, what I saw, but it's the most beautiful sight that I've ever seen. And, um, you know, I, when you, we sing that song, Don't Tell Me God Can't Do It, I know better because I've seen it and I've experienced it. And I'm a walking miracle. And like Mary told me earlier this morning, it's for the glory of God. And I'm gonna be sharing this testimony as God opens up opportunity for me everywhere I go and letting people know that God still raises the dead, God still heals the sick, and his power still casts out devils, amen? Amen, praise God. Well, we're glad to have you with us this morning. And you can go ahead and start Instagram. We'll give that a minute to get wound up. Going. Okay, <laughs> now we're on Instagram. Welcome Instagram. We took a brief pause to allow you to get uh, in with us. We're glad that you are here. Uh, we've been averaging uh, two to three thousand people uh, tuning in to our broadcast on Sunday mornings. A little bit less on Tuesday nights, but Sunday morning we're doing a really good job. We've had as many as uh, just just a hair under six thousand people watching at one time. So God's moving through this broadcast ministry to people. And I believe by the power of the Holy Spirit that I'm delivering the messages people need to hear by the Holy Spirit and that he's moving on the hearts and minds of people to uh, become doers of the word, not just hearers. Amen, amen, praise God. Well, I wanna get into the word this morning. Uh, the title is Redemption Insights. And this is part one of what I think will be a two or three part uh, grouping on this particular title. <clears throat> so I want to start off with a, a statement that um, growing up in church, I've seen, uh, I've seen a lot of things. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, I've seen uh, services where the power of God has flowed and people have been healed and delivered, miracles take place. I've seen uh, services that were just the flesh. Uh, I've heard messages that were the same, some of them in the flesh and some were uh, by the Spirit of God. Um, so, so I've seen a lot of things. But one of the things that um, I saw as I became a teenager and then later on as a young adult, that when we talk about redemption, uh, most of the time it's talked about from a very negative perspective. Uh, perspective. It's talked about from a law or legal perspective, uh, the Old Testament law and so forth. And, um, you know, the thou shalt nots. And, and most of what we were taught growing up was thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And we were not taught about the thou shalts and the God shall. <laughs> and those are the things we really need to hear because telling somebody Quit sinning doesn't work. So what we need to do is tell them what redemption really is, what God really did for us and why he did it and how he did it. And that's uh, what we wanna uh, cover this morning. But let's go back, <clears throat> excuse my voice again. Let's go back to Exodus uh, chapter 20 and we're gonna read the law uh, just so you can remember what it says. Verses 1 through 17, King James Translation. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in uh, heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. 
Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord. If in it thou shalt not do any work, thou shalt not, I'm sorry, uh, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant, thy maidservant, nor the cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that's in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor the Lord, well, I'm just going to back up. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his servant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, or his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. <clears throat> We have here in these 17 verses, 11 thou shalt nots, 11 negatives, and we have only five positives. So when we teach the law and we govern by the Ten Commandments, uh, we're dealing with a lot of negative instead of a lot of positive. Now, you know, in the New Testament, the Bible says that that old covenant was finished, it was complete, it was wrapped up like an old garment and put away because the new covenant has come. The new covenant is not full of thou shalt not, it's full of what God has done. It's full of the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. And we need to spend more time studying that than the thou shalt nots. But that's the religious perspective, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. So that's why we need to take a look at it. Uh, we were told uh, that we were all sinners. Of course, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The problem is, too many preachers have just preached that. And they haven't preached redemption in the sense of being delivered from sin. They haven't preached the power to overcome sin, the power to, to uh, have authority over the devil and his attacks against us. Romans 3.10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. But that's until we met Jesus. Because Jesus changes us. And Jesus makes us righteous. Gives, doesn't just give us something we call righteousness, but makes us righteous. In fact, the Bible says that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we've been, by, by Jesus, we've been made righteous. So we don't need to be told you need to be righteous, need to quit sinning. Uh, those are all things that God will write on our hearts by his spirit, the Bible says. Once we know and understand the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, those things become second place, secondary in our lives. And we begin to put those things down. Instead of living those things, we begin to develop a heart to serve God but we've not been taught that much. Consequently, we've got too many people still living under guilt, condemnation, a feeling of rejection because of their sin, and no hope. We've been told to get saved, we've been told to repent, we've been told to stop sinning, we've been told to confess our sins. <clears throat> it's, been left, it's left us with a feeling of unworthiness, a feeling of guilt, condemnation, helplessness, unrighteousness. But we, if we understand redemption, we understand righteousness, we understand the work of Jesus, we walk away from all that stuff. We walk away from the unworthy feeling, the guilty feeling, the condemnation, the feeling of helplessness, 
that we can't overcome these things. We walk away from unrighteousness. Maybe I need to uh, give you a little insight on righteousness. Righteousness is really simple to understand. It's the ability to stand before God, in God's presence, without any sense of sin, guilt, or condemnation. But when you're always preached at, and you're always told the law and the legalism of the Old Testament, then we don't believe that we have the right to stand in the presence of God. And even if we go to God in prayer, too many times the, the teaching we've had that has left us with guilt and condemnation keeps us from receiving from God because we don't believe we deserve. But when you've been made the righteousness of God, all God's blessings belong to you. It's not a matter of deserving. You didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. But because of Jesus, we become deserving. So when I go boldly before the throne of grace, as the Bible says, I come, bold, I come expecting, I come boldly, and I expect to receive help and mercy in my time of need, and not to hear the voice of God condemning me for things I've done in the past. If you've made Jesus Lord of your life, you are free from that. You don't have to live under that guilt and condemnation anymore. And if, you're, if you are born again, and you're still living under guilt and condemnation, then pay attention to what I'm sharing with you this morning. One of the things that I love in the Bible, we see a number of verses to start out with, but God. And, and it's always after it talks about something negative because God removes the negative of our lives. God removes the guilt, the condemnation, the unrighteous feelings. And so we need to look at, but God, what did God do for us? In Ephesians chapter two, verse four, but God, so rich in his, uh, is he, I'm sorry, so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, slain by our own trust, our shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ the same new life with which he quickened him, for it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Now listen to this next segment here. He raised us up together with him, made us sit down together with him, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly spirit by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, and surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor, his kindness and goodness of heart toward us in Christ Jesus. Verse eight, for it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved delivered from judgment, made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves. In other words, you can't earn it by good works. It's not your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it is. Let's talk about salvation. It is the gift of God, not because of works, not the fulfillment of the law's demands, like we started out talking about lest any man should boast. It is not the result of what anyone can possibly do, so no one can pride himself in it or take glory in himself. So we've got to get rid of the, the idea that we don't deserve. We've got to get rid of the idea that because I'm a sinner that I can't get the mercy of God. For God so loved the world. That was the sinner. That was the unrighteous. That was the unworthy. He loved the world enough to send Jesus. Amen? Amen. Romans 8, verse uh, chapter 3, verse 20 through 22. For no person will be justified or made righteous and acquitted or judged acceptable in his sight by observe, observing the works prescribed by the law. For the real function of the law is to make men recognize and be conscious of sin, not mere perception, but an acquaintance with sin, 
which works toward repentance, faith, and character. But now the righteousness of God has been revealed independently and altogether apart from the law, although actually it is attested to by the law and the prophets, namely the righteousness of God, which comes by believing with personal trust and confident reliance on Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And it is meant for all who believe, but there is no distinction. So the one qualification is clearly, it's for all who believe. So you have to make up your mind to believe God. Quit believing what some preacher tells us that uh, we, we can't get our prayers answered, that God won't, God won't heal us because we've got something in our past hanging over us. God's not holding up, counting up and holding against men their trespasses. He canceled them by the blood of Jesus. So we need to look to God with mercy and grace, understanding that. We need to look to God with boldness and faith, understanding that God hears our prayers, that God answers our prayers, and never does he say no because of something you did yesterday, last week, last month, last year, 10 years ago. Doesn't matter. There's nothing in your life that God is holding against you. He's canceled them by the blood of Jesus. So how do you partake of the blood of Jesus? You make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You pray the simple prayer of faith. Jesus, I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe you died for my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Take charge, be, take control, be Lord of my life. See, a simple prayer like that is all it takes to become a child of God, to become righteous, to have right standing with God, to be cleansed, from your sin and unrighteousness, it all comes with that simple prayer of faith. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 29, it says here, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He takes away the sin of the world. He took your sin away. You're not an old sinner saved by grace. You were an old sinner. You were saved by grace. You are now the righteousness of God. You are now a child of God. You, you now have legal access to the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus became sin, the Bible teaches us. Jesus became sin, became our sin sacrifice, our substitute, our covenant substitute. He paid the price for our sin so that we don't have to pay that, pay that price. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.21 King James Translation says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So he was made to be sin. He didn't know sin. He didn't commit sin. But he became sin. For us, which also means he became the curse because he bore the curse in our place. So we don't have to live under the curse of sin anymore. We live under the blessing of righteousness. He paid the price for our sin, uh, made, us, made him to be sin for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21, and listen to this in the Passion Translation. For God made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us. So that we who did, uh, did not know righteousness might become the righteousness of God through our union with him as Jesus. Amen? This is called grace. This is called mercy. This is called the love of God. <clears throat> we need to understand that grace, mercy, and the love of God go hand in hand. Grace and mercy are the result of God's love for us. Amen. John chapter 3. Verses 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world. Now, I, I quoted this to you already. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's why Jesus came. He, he came to redeem us from our sins to restore us to fellowship with the Father. You can't ask for anything greater than that. 
And that's not a, a thing that you do every Sunday. When I grew up in church, it was we were uh, preached to with, with the idea that you got to get saved every Sunday. You got to run to the altar. You got to repent of sins. You got to cry all these tear stains on the altar and, and hope that somehow God forgives you and God delivers you and maybe God will answer a prayer now and then. But that's that old legalistic mindset that we've had and that's not God. That's bondage. That's what the devil wants us to believe. We don't deserve. We're too wicked. We're too evil. We've done too much wrong. So there's no way God's going to hear your prayers. I got news for you. The moment you make Jesus Lord, that's all been erased. It's deleted. You know, on your computers, you hit delete. It's not like the old typewriters. You know, old typewriters, you, you, you do that backspace with the white film and it kind of blocks it out, but you kind of still see the letters there. Well, on the, new, on the newer computers and pads and so forth, when you type, if you mess up, you just hit delete. And what happens? There's no evidence you ever messed up. Well, Jesus hit the delete button in our lives. When we make him Lord, that delete manifests, and there's no more evidence that we ever sinned. The Bible says God removes your sin as far as the east is from the west. If there's no more remembrance of sin. If there's no more remembrance of sin, we've got to quit condemning ourselves for the sin that we've had in our lives. We got to quit condemning ourselves for the way we used to be. Even after you get born again, because the Bible doesn't say in the natural you'll be made perfect. It says in the spirit you'll be made perfect. In the natural we still have the flesh. We still have the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions that we have to deal with. We have temptation to deal with. So the Bible then, that grace is extended even into present day uh, terminology or present day, if I can say it this way, present day sin. The Bible says if we sin, Confess our sin to God. It doesn't say go to a priest, go to a man, go to anybody else. It says go to God. Confess our sin. And God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So even after we're born again, if we sin, we've got to repent. That means to change and go the opposite direction. You're not going to keep on doing the things you know you should not be doing. At some point, you, you're going to have a heart to serve God and that righteousness that's in you is going to rise up and it's going to change the way you think. It's going to change your desires. It's going to change your actions, which is really what we want to happen anyway. So in order to, be, to, to uh, have that happen, you can't live a life full of guilt and condemnation. You've got to live a life full of understanding God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy. 2 Corinthians 5.19 says, it was God personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but canceling them and committing to us the message of reconciliation, of the restoration to favor. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God making his appeal, as it were, through us, we, as Christ's ambassadors or Christ's personal representatives, beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered you and be reconciled to God. You can be free from guilt and condemnation of sin. You can be free from all those things that have held you back from fully committing to the things of God and enjoying your Christian walk. And the, the only qualification is making Jesus Lord of your life. Now, if, if you've never done that, you can do it right now, and I'll lead you in that prayer that I prayed a few minutes ago. Uh, and if you want to be born again, if you want to know God as your Father that loves you and cares for you, and know Jesus as your Lord and Savior that died and paid the price for you, then I want you to pray this prayer with me. Dear God in heaven, go ahead and say it. I believe you raised Jesus from the dead on my behalf. I believe he paid the price for my sin and you raised him from the dead for me. And you 
word declares that when you raised him from the dead, that I was in him. Your word declares that I died in him, but I was resurrected in him and seated at your right hand. So Father, today, I make Jesus Lord of my life. Jesus, come into my life. Be Lord over my life. Change me from the inside out. I receive you now. Amen. That's a simple prayer. Now, every time I pray that prayer, it's slightly different. I prayed this, this time based on what I felt impressed the Spirit because there's different ways you get to the same results in the sense of how you pray the prayer. The basics, the basics are if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess him with your mouth as Lord, you will be saved. That's the basics. You make a choice to believe what God did for you through Jesus and then you confess with your mouth that he's Lord and Savior over your life. Now, if you've never done that before, I want to do something for you. After you get born again, you need to have an understanding of, of this Christian walk. You need to have an understanding of what's the next step? What do I do now? I pray the prayer, now what? I've got a book I want to give you. It's called Welcome to the Family. And if you'll uh, email me, and ask me for this, I'll send it to you free of charge. My email address is wemmons01 at gmail.com. That's wemmons01 at gmail.com. Say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer. I'd love to have that book that you're uh, talking about. Welcome to the family. And all you got to do is give us your address so we know where to send that book to you. And we'll send it out to you. We want to bless you with that. We want you to know what the next steps are. What are the things we need to do now that we pray that prayer? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I know this is a short message uh, today, only about 30 minutes. I'm giving my voice as much rest as I can. God is restoring me completely, 100%. Uh, my strength and uh, my voice and everything else has been affected because I've been redeemed from the curse I've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. If you want to agree with me in prayer, just agree with me that, that I have a new heart and I have full strength and vitality that God gave me originally and everything's been negatively affected, has been restored positively. I, I, I find these little things around the house. This is my, my wife is really trying to keep me, uh, uh, remi reminding me, remembering that uh, God's giving me, an, or has given me a new heart. So she, I found this one here. Uh, guess who loves you today? And down here it says Jesus. And right up here, the, the, little, the little dog sang uh, for, for a new heart. And uh, so that's a blessing. She's uh, put other ones around the house and once, uh, every once in a while I'll, I'll look up and there'll be something on the cupboard to talk about a new heart. Uh, she shared with people when she's been on the phone, I have a new middle name. My, my son, um, was it my son? No, my daughter, Carrie, that uh, we were on the phone with her yesterday. And I told her my new name. She's, oh, you've taken your Indian heritage name, huh? I said, I'm part Cherokee Indian. And um, so my new name is William New Heart Emmons, because God's given me a new heart. So agree with me for these things. And I believe each day I get stronger. Each day I, I can walk further. I can do more. Uh, they've told me, you know, I can't drive for six months. They've told me I can't lift more than a gallon, equal to a gallon of milk, which is about six or seven pounds. And um, there's things they told me I can't do for a while. But I declare my youth is a new daily. And if I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, it's time for me to act like it. And I am. And I'm doing what... The, what the, my body tells me I can't do, I'm doing because God says I'm redeemed. Amen? So join with me in faith as I continue to stand for my complete restoration in the name of Jesus. I want to thank our partners for your faithfulness. Um, we, we just watched you guys bless and give and sow seed into this ministry, and we appreciate it so much. You're the ones that are giving us the ability to do what we do every Sunday morning and every Tuesday night with our Bible study. And we appreciate it so much. Uh, you know.
you know, our words really can't express how much we appreciate you as our partners, praying with us, standing with us, agreeing with us, and of course, supporting uh, our ministry. Uh, I've got a, a first phase goal uh, for 50, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, for 100 partners, and uh, we're on our way to that goal. We don't have it yet, but we're starting. And uh, so we believe we receive 100 partners. That's people that will not just say, well, I'll pray for you, Pastor, but they're gonna get involved with us and partner with our ministry by your prayers, by your faith, by your giving and support for what we do. And uh, so God is doing that and one by one new partners are coming in. And we want you to know that you are a blessing. We pray for you. We believe God with you. And we believe that every seed you sow to this ministry will come back to you a hundredfold return. And uh, that's biblical. Uh, the Bible says some sow seed and got 30 fold, some sow seed and got 60 fold, but some sow seed and got a hundred fold. I like to go for the best, for the highest. So we're believing God for a hundred fold return for every dime, every dollar you sold to this ministry. And we will use it and put it to work in the work of God as the Holy Spirit directs. And um, I just think this morning, we heard testimony from uh, some ministries that have actually taken their airplanes or jets as the case may be, and have gone to Afghanistan and rescued people, Christians there. Uh, we've heard testimony of, uh, of a group that's going down uh, to, uh, I guess it would be um, uh, Louisiana because there's a hurricane, I guess, that's about to hit. Uh, at least that's what the news is saying. And so they're planning on sending a team down there to help in any way they can help and provide food and water and so forth. Well, we support these ministries. And as you give into this ministry, we, we do, uh, uh, if I can talk about a, a, double, uh, a, a double seed, uh, you give into our ministry, then we turn around and give into other ministries. So we give into those ministries, we support them. In fact, probably tomorrow our uh, our giving for this next month will be going out and we support um, I think it's a half a dozen ministries or so and uh, they're ministries I think you'd all approve of because they're all doing a work uh, for God and uh, most of them have outreaches that are helping people we're not equipped to do a lot of the things other ministries can do and so we support those doing things we can't do and so your giving helps accomplish that. So thank you so much for that. Amen. Um, if you don't know how to give, let me give you that information. We have Venmo. Uh, Venmo, you, know, you can go on Venmo and type in the at symbol, that little A with a circle around it, at william Emmons 10 And that goes into our ministry account, even though my name's on it. We have a PayPal account. The email for it is w-e-m-m-o-n-s-01 at gmail.com. That also goes into our ministry account. Then if you want to give through debit or credit card, uh, as someone actually did this morning before the service, thank you for that, by the way, uh, you can text your debit or credit card information to us. Uh, you can uh, send it to 818 679 seven zero six seven and we'll get that text make sure you include your three digit um, code on the back and your zip code for where your statement goes every month and of course the amount uh, include all the numbers and we'll run that and then after we run it we'll delete it from our devices so nobody can get their hands on it or you can email us the same information on your debit or credit card uh, and that's the email we gave you already, w-e-m-m-o-n-s-01 at gmail.com. And again, once we run the debit or credit card, uh, we'll delete that information so nobody can get their hands on it. So thank you once again. We love you guys. We appreciate you. If you live in the Tulsa area, I'm going to give a little advertisement to our son. Uh, Jonathan's the one that was here that really took charge, and I'm here today because of what he did. Uh, but he's got a business and he repairs uh, automobile glass and rock chips and things like that. And, and uh, so if you need somebody good that can do a good job and give you a good price, uh, Einstein 
Auto Glass is the, his company name. Uh, he's not paying me for this. This is not like a sponsor thing. I just wanted to share that with you because I appreciate him so much and what he did for me and how God used him in this whole deal that we're going through. So I wanted to promote him a little bit. All right. Uh, by the way, I didn't tell you, uh, if you're going to send mail, send lot, most of the giving that comes in comes by mail. Uh, our post office box is uh, P.O. Box 141074. That's 141074. Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And the zip code is 74014. 74014. All right, so that takes care of that information. Uh, we'll be back here Tuesday night. I'll be stronger, have a stronger voice, and we may take more time. But I have a message for you, a teaching on Tuesday night. That's our Bible study time. But I believe that today's message blessed you. I believe if you'll take it and listen to it a few times, get it down inside of you. Become a doer of the word. Act on it. Receive what God has for you. That the message today is going to be a blessing to your life. And you can in turn share it with others. So I'm going to ask you to do that. Share this message. If you're on Facebook, <clears throat> go to my uh, YouTube page, Pastor William Emmons, and subscribe and share that with people. Uh, I'll have this later on today on uh, um, Gab. That's G-A-B with a plus sign after it. Uh, I'll have it on there. That's where we're getting the most response from. Uh, we also have it on Instagram. Uh, so you can find us on those different places and be sure to share it with other people uh, and become a follower. Follow us on those different devices, different uh, platforms. And we're going to be adding more shortly. So pray for us for that. Amen. All right. You have a blessed day and we will see you Tuesday night at seven o'clock California time for here in, in Tulsa area. That's going to be nine o'clock and then you can figure it out from there from where you are. All right. Be blessed.